I'm going to open the meeting. I'm open the meeting. Okay, welcome to the April 11th meeting, the Water Resources Advisory Committee. Um, we might bounce around a little bit on the agenda. Jeff, are you handling the treatment facility design or is that Carol going to talk about that? Well, I'm going to just talk about that briefly, that treatment facility designer process. Is that, uh, is this year? And I'm sure the committee is aware um, the board selected and supported the recommendation for CDM Smith. And so we are working uh, with CDM Smith on the proposal for the design of the treatment facility and uh, reviewing the scope. Uh, we have our OPM taking a look at that as well. Hopefully we'll have something uh, finalized shortly on, uh, on the design of the treatment facility. Um, the collection system is a, a separate update and I um, don't have too much more on the treatment facility. Unless there's any questions, we could move on to that one. There is some pretty powerful tools that CDM Smith has to visualize what that uh, uh, can look like, both from a um, uh, outside standpoint and inside the facility. So when that time comes, I'm sure there's some pretty good graphics we'll be able to show the committee uh, as that design process moves forward. That's really the update for that. Somebody asked me a question, and I, I think it would apply to both the collection and the, and the treatment is that, do we own the product that's being created by the designer? I think the answer would be yes. What, what do you mean? I heard there have uh, been jobs in the past where things split and the designer didn't really leave the owner with the, what they paid for. And I'm not saying that might happen here. I just want to make sure we don't run into a problem that, there's a question about it relates to ownership of documents and the liability the plans. Yes, yeah. uh, the designer sort of has a right to tell us we can't use it with or for something else in some of the contracts. I don't know if that's it, in this usually in our contract when town council reviews our contract, they try to ensure that uh, the ownership of the uh, documentation from this uh, effort will be the town so that there won't be challenges in the future. But I know of some cases where there has been. And, and I understand the other side of it where the designers don't want their work being used for something else. I'm just talking about specifically that whatever happens for this project is available to us for this project. Yes, basically. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And that's not my question. Somebody else brought it to me. So I just want to bring it in. All right. Um, Bill, where do you think we should go next? Well, with the collection system update, I think we're, we're preparing <laughs> oh, to sorry. talk about it a little more in depth, if you'd like. Sure, go ahead. Um, I'll start. I know uh, our CDM Smith team is here. We can probably uh, elaborate quite a bit uh, more, but we are having monthly uh, design review meetings, uh, town staff with, uh, uh, with CDM. And uh, we had time tomorrow's meeting to be before your next RAC meeting, but uh, this got uh, advanced a little bit. So... I really just have information from last month's meeting to share with you. I've got some uh, diagrams uh, on the table here. Uh, it really hasn't changed um, uh, significantly. Uh, we are starting to get into the details on uh, the collection system, uh, more specifically as it relates to Route 28 and North Main Street and Old Main Street uh, and the Mass DOT coordination there, as well as their other project. Uh, the 75% uh, design plans are due next month, I believe. And so uh, we're on schedule to have uh, the collection system uh, plans um, married with their design for that intersection in the bridge. And that's uh, that piece is, is moving forward. Like I said, probably a little uh, more in depth than the rest of the collection system where preliminary design for uh, the rest of phase one collection system. And other than that, Mike or Carrie, do you have anything you want to add to that? Um, I'm happy to answer any questions, but yeah, that's basically an overview. Um, for those who don't, I haven't met most of you. It might be to see from CDM Smith. I'm not just need to be on a mic somehow, or is this picking up for me? Yeah, just come up to the table <laughs> in case there are any questions. Again, I'm Mike Judici, CDM Smith. So I'm the project manager on the collection system design. Uh, I was actually the project manager back in 2010 when we designed what was then the phase one collection system as well. So as Jeff indicated, uh, the intersection, the Mass Dodd intersection project at 28 Old Main and North Main Street is 
being pushed along. May 12th is their 75% design submittals or if we're on schedule to, to meet that deadline. Um, the other mass dot project from the Barnesville Town Line to Parker's River. Uh, we're also working with their designers as well. That schedule is a little bit behind the other intersection project. So what we've been doing is taking our original design from 2011 and bringing that into the, uh, the new survey information and roadway drawings <clears throat> that the designer for that portion of the project has provided to us and making modifications where we need to. So that effort is moving along. Um, as a sidebar, we've had some coordination with uh, Kathy Williams, the planning board for the town planner for the main pumping station for that section of the collection system that will be located at the old drive-in site. So we're trying to coordinate the design of that station with that Riverview Park uh, design that's moving forward. So um, we've had to modify the original layout of that pumping station from the original design to accommodate uh, the new layout of that, of that park. But the good news is it looks like it will fit. It looks like it'll fit. It's some pretty uh, <laughs> ambitious plans, in my opinion, for the drive-in site where there are uh, one lane in, and I think two lanes out, Correct. with like a third lane being uh, potentially uh, reinforced turf uh, for um, uh, you know, big events, that type of thing, where they might need a third lane. And so uh, I don't think initially we'd anticipated that type of uh, infrastructure having to share that same frontage with the pump station. But um, we've had some good meetings, um, as Mike indicated, and it looks like everything does fit. We're just kind of getting into the details of you know, what that looks like in grading. And um, you know, certainly site plan review is going to have, um, and design review, I should say, is going to have some good input on what the, the, the pump station looks like. And, you know, fitting in the character of, uh, of Yarmouth <coughs> and, and blending it as much as possible. It's still a pump station. <coughs> a lot of things that can be done with, uh, with siding and, and other things that they're, they're uh, starting to think about. So those are all kind of... So how, how much of it is above ground? It's a, it's a building. It's a building. It's, what's the size? A lot of it's going to be underground. Correct. The pumps, you know, it's, a, it's what we call a wet pit, dry pit station. Yeah. So all the pumps that would be below grade as well as the wet yeah. well. And then the superstructure, you know, we've sort of tailored it originally to look like a single family house because it is pretty substantial. You see a lot of them in the Marshall now, especially on West Main Street. It starts out with a gigantic hole in the ground. People freak out. And <laughs> right. It's finished with a basically small brick building. Correct. Above ground. Yeah, this one will be a little bit bigger because of the flows here, especially in the future, are pretty significant. So it's around a 40 by 50 uh, footprint, I think, for the building. So it's it's a decent size. The other stations along 28 will be quite a bit smaller than that, more on the 15, you know, 10 to 12 by 15 foot uh, footprint. In that general. Right, that's the main public station. That's one of the main public stations. Correct. This is Kathy. And then the third piece of the puzzle for phase one is just between the two mascot projects. So east of Parker's River up to the intersection project, um, which includes all of 28, Old Main Street, the streets between them, and also includes uh, South Shore Drive as well. So that's a, you know, this in the way we've been working it, it's sort of three distinct areas of the, that make up phase one. So for that middle piece, uh, we have the survey um, based on an early contract with the town. So the topographic survey is in and we're getting ready to start uh, moving it on in that piece as well. So you said the streets between Old Main and 28 are included in this plan? Did I get that correctly? <laughs> Correct. So this, yeah, I was just referencing that, just uh, some of the feature. Yeah, yeah, so this is all part of phase one. So the. The MassDOT project extends just a little bit down Old Main and 28. So everything between here and Parker's River is sort of in that middle section that I mentioned. Yeah, is, I guess um, there, was a, there was some talk about having to pick up some residential areas to make up for the extra nitrogen going in from the disposal at Buck Island. Has that been thought about? Is, is that necessary and are we doing that? Well, that hasn't been determined as a requirement. Um, that's really going to come out of the groundwater discharge permit process. Uh, but as of right now, the feeling is because we are treated with a much higher nitrogen removal standard than previously, that it may not be required. So. But people have asked about that again. 
heard anything definitive as to what is or is nothing has been definitively determined on that. The other part of the update is we uh, did have a, a notice of project change was submitted as a, the committee's aware. Um, we've had a, a meeting with uh, the MEPA team on that. And, do expect a certificate to be issued shortly, correct? This week, yes. The public so, so supposed comment period ended on the 8th, and they're supposed to issue it on the 15th. So, yeah. this is Friday. so once, as we get further through the permit process, Kurt, I think we'll have a better answer to your question. Mike, do you mind answering or explaining uh, for us again, and then for everyone watching and hasn't heard it before, the prioritizing the phases? Why is phase two phase two and phase three is phase three? I can't I for that one. Yeah, that's that before his time. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I can remember that. Look at the sewer um, So in terms of the phasing plan, it was sort of a combination of things, but the main focus was the nitrogen removal. So phase one is obviously the stem of the system. And then phase two is looking at getting additional nitrogen out of um, Parker's River, Lewis Bay watershed area. So it's the nitrogen removal is the focus. When you say nitrogen, are you talking slow amount of nitrogen removed, the critical nature of the, of the nitrogen. At the moment, looking at phase two, the Lewis Bay, as opposed to phase five in Parker's room. Yeah, it's a combination. Um, I think it's the nitrogen removal required in that area being a priority versus the other watershed. Um, so there's a significant amount being removed in the phase one area over here. So we wanted to make sure we pick up from multiple areas. I'm just getting nervous that these particular district is flipping increasingly to seasonal, which would tend to reduce flow overall. Yeah, I'm not so sure. <laughs> well, it concentrates for now <laughs> into two months as opposed to spreading no, out. I, I, I think it's a fair number of houses that go the other way in that district. The seasonal will be coming year round. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, certainly the phasing is something we could talk about going forward. We know what phase one is, and then the others can, you know. Yeah, right. That was the key well, thing that we talked about with people was that this is an adoptive management plan. So nothing is going to okay. go exactly as it's shown in the no, town. It's of the that you have to shift gears along the way. But at the same time, you have to keep an eye on how much flow is coming into the system so you can, one, continually um, expand the system capacity here, but also pay for it. So, I mean, you could sewer everybody here and nobody flushes the toilet. Now you're stuck. Yeah, that's a good point. As we're starting each phase and we're working on it with Mike now is getting the last few years of water data, water use data, so we can actually look at the usage from the last few years before our phase is started. You could probably also make assumptions that if a property was used year round based on bedroom count and historical data within the town of properties that fit that, you could say, well, if there's a three bedroom house right now, it's seasonally used, but if we go year round, we can make an assumption that's going to be X gallons per day or year off that property. Right, and we work through those build out calculations with Kathy and, and do have those in the plan. Another question I, I meant to ask when we were talking about pump stations, um, the generator for that pump station at Packers River, imagine this flood level of concern, a flood plane and all that. Yeah. Can and they right talk about, it's considered sure. inside or outside? Well, those are all good questions. Those have to be worked out through the design process, but right now it's being shown outside and so there is elevation issues associated with that. If it becomes too uh, onerous, we may have to look at doing something different. Do you have other comments on that? No, that's a great point. Yeah, it's, it's, it's currently laid out, the generator is outside. We have those same issues with pumping station itself. So that's part of the challenge of that site. It's so you know, it's a pretty small site. We need to build the grade up to get the critical facility with pumping station itself. And would, and would that be the place. same headache with that? To, um, we have a requirement of a seven day fuel supply. So it would be a diesel as opposed to natural gas or not. So setting that criteria. Well, I think there's other considerations with regards to the <clears throat> fuel source. Um, you know, in the case of the DPW building, we went with diesel and that was more of a cost consideration. Um, so there's a lot of things, it's both costs as well as supply. Uh, in previous years, the gas company was telling us they couldn't supply large volumes of gas, but that's probably changed now that they've enlarged the pipe. So 
Uh, that's more of the detailed design when we determine what type of generator, but um, because it is it, a consideration. At, at, the reason I ask is because at the school, it turned into a bit of a headache because it was originally specced as a natural gas. And then apparently there's a rule with schools over a certain size that have to have a seven day supply of fuel for the emergency generator. Well, again, it also goes back to you to call it emergency <laughs> generator or backup Just terminology gets you in trouble. So just one of the things I'm thinking about and, and also being as close to the water as it is, Unless it has some kind of really good weatherized housing, it will have a short life to the side. Something to consider right. as we move. Forward. We'll have to look at all those things. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Do I have anything from uh, either Tom or Mary out there? No questions. Guess not. Hear them. <laughs> Oops. All right. um, if you have to, you can always chat with us too. I guess it will show up, right? Kyle? All right. Um, okay. You want to do that? Sure. Yeah, I'm flexible. So whatever works for everybody, it's in the room. Can everyone see? Can you guys on Zoom see the, the screen, the web pages? Yes. All right, cool. All right, so um, we've been working on these for quite a bit. We're uh, making kind of sub pages for the wastewater project to break them down into specific topics. Um, so we have four different sub pages that we're working on right now. This is all, I should preface this by saying this is all in draft mode right now. Nothing's been published. Uh, but this is health and environment. So it speaks to obviously the health and environment aspects of the project. Uh, it has all the useful um, images associated with that. Uh, and then we have a lot of uh, the important documents. So the, the idea with this, uh, you want to speak to the idea? You can probably articulate that better. <laughs> sure. uh, I gave a presentation in Iraq, I think, a while ago. Right. Related to this, and the board select and show the hierarchy of certain web pages. And rather than trying to cram everything on the rack page, we broke them up into topics because there's so much information. And <clears throat> in addition to that, we're looking at adding things like to healthy environment. Uh, the Board of Health uh, just issued a resolution supporting uh, the wastewater project. So that would go get posted under health and environment. As we get to the finance page, we both finance issues. So from a sort of a transparency issue, you can go to one of these pages and find out these issues that are specific to these topics and not try to figure it out on the layers of the rack page. So Kyle, you want to go to the rack page, the original page? So that is more of a sort of an introduction. The videos are still there. But then off of it would be these separate pages, uh, finance and a few others would probably be created too as we get there. There's going to be a page for you know household and businesses connection. So the instructions on how to do that. So that's the rack page, but then on the left-hand side, you go to each one of these pages. And then so these are all pages related to the relationship between the topic and wastewater. So in this case, it is a relationship between, you know, tax levy by class, that's one issue, but, you know, also growth, <clears throat> diversity and economy. So go to the bottom and then all the relevant documents of Donahue study, the DIF program, all that would be on this page. So the advantage of it is somebody looking for topical information can hit these pages. And, uh, and then you can also take the opportunity to describe what you're trying to accomplish on each topic. So from there, Kyle, you go. Yeah, I think you just said it all, really. Uh, <laughs> no, that's perfect. Sorry. That's what I was hoping for. Um, so I have two questions. Yeah. Or comments. 
Has anybody dared to put an inflation figure on the $100 million Donahue number? Since it is 12 years old now, right? That's like 2010 on it. Mm -hmm. uh, no, but I also don't think we like quoted the figure. I think, we, I think we should say that we believe that's a conservative number somewhere in the world. Well, the Donahue report was done <clears throat> during the PHY process. Um, we had, uh, Dennis had done a study as it related to uh, their community, we kind of adapted that like the year later. So it's not that old, but it is going to start to be a couple of years old now. Well, the data that they used is older than the report. It's right. almost 10 years older than the report. So it's, it's a decade. It's, it's, it's a placeholder. Yeah. It is. I, I'm just, I think if anybody hangs their hat on that number as to whether that's the project kind of my point. Yeah. 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 I think that's, but I think it's like when you make cost estimates. We want to feel comfortable with cost estimates. I think we need to be able to say to people, we feel confident with the growth estimates saying $100 million, believing it'll be much more. I don't, I don't want to say much more, but more than that. Well, we need to. For, you need to minimize the doubt. Yeah, we need to, from the market study that we went to the CEDC to fund, uh, do numbers for the diff, projected revenues. So that's what we'll do between uh, you know, this time and the next one. And my only other thing would be where we use so many acronyms that some of us don't think twice about the average person in the public may be lost. So I don't know if there's a way cluster. to explain those. Yeah, when there's acronyms, I usually, I'll double cluster check, but I usually spell it out the first time and then okay. parentheses with the acronym. That's the same question I asked three months ago. Is there any part of this dynamic where you can talk back to us? Comment for each Submit your question. Yeah, I mean, uh, something in. We can add that. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't. I'm not an IT guy, so I don't know how to set up something that automatically does that. Email address on page. Well, yeah, we have Jeff's email address on the front the form. <laughs> we got Jeff's email address on the rack. Yeah, I was thinking more lines of the form, so you could just uh, standardize it and not get all sorts of. And his number too. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, we used to have the individual selectors' email addresses on our website, didn't we? Then we opted for one general box. It also reminds me while I just remember it that we have some terms that actually I was noticing when I was looking at this page expired 11 days ago. So mm -hmm. be okay. contacting some people about that. Mm -hmm. So back to the subject. Well, that's four pages. people. Huh? And then we also, I think the one I didn't show you was state and federal requirements too. So that one is basically going to list all the requirements, the CMR, the CFR is associated with this, the MEPA things, and some of it is embedded in the website. And then it's two prong. One is, here's the requirements if you're gonna build it. And then the other half uh, where it starts as a paragraph adhering uh, to regulations, that's going to talk about the no action, that is lawsuits and other things that could happen if you take no action. So that we look at this as if you follow the project program, maybe everything else, you move forward under your control. And if you don't move ahead, those are the implications. So Donahue report has a good sort of, and you want to click on that, Kyle, sort of no action uh, section of their report. And that's up there. We also yeah. have newspaper articles and things like that about lawsuits up there. And I'm collecting all the SRF guidelines and everything else because often people are going to ask questions and I thought you had to do this. Why do you have to do that? Having those documents up there, whether people you know can comprehend all of it, means that they're available to them. So these are some of the things that you know, most of this that's up there is what happens if you have no action. We're going to populate it with all the Legal requirements associated with the permitting also. So beyond that, there's local, you got local economy, state and federal, healthy environments. So I think finance will be the next page we'll be building. Should there be a, a, a page, I don't know if benchmarks is the right word, but goals and when we plan to hit them or you know, well, we plan to be live, hopefully yeah. be live with the system. When we go to the project management page, right now, as <clears> things <throat> develop uh, through Jeff's team 
in terms of scheduling and everything else, it will end up down the bottom. You know, it's hopefully next week you can say, well, as of April 15th, the state is approved. Right. Right. You know, things like that also. So some of the things you saw, the collection system maps and everything else will be on this page. So if somebody wants to know the status, so you're right, Kurt, I think what we have to do is maybe simplify it and say, where are we? Somewhere in maybe in a narrative that would go to a document that they could just figure out that one thing. So they don't have to and, read everything. And I realize it's still a moving target, but I think, I still believe that when we can get more definitive as a town about when this system's gonna go live, you're gonna see a lot of the people who own property or who want to sell their property, take action. And, and my hope that they would develop so it would meet the opening date of the sewer system. So I think if we can kind of get a range of times that we see what happen, it'd be helpful to the poll. No, I think they'll wait until it's constructed and sell it with the sewer line. Well, some people might, but I'm just thinking yeah. that there are other people and who then do plan to develop. proceeds of sale to pay us back. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever, whatever works. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Do you anticipate circulating this before town meeting? Well, this is just a draft. Yeah, this is this is a web pages. We can open them up before town meeting if we want to. Yeah, there's a some uh, there are some articles at town meeting. Not a lot. We're certainly going to have it as we proceed between the two town meetings with a lot of work. You know, design work. If work, things like that. I'm not necessarily before this town meeting, but perhaps before the next one. Oh, well, certainly. I, I, okay. I think uh, a, a list of uh, what the home owner will be responsible for, what the yeah. business owner will be responsible for. A lot of people are starting to ask questions. Am I going to have to pay for uh, the connection for the pipe between the street and my house? I say yes, mm -hmm. but I think we need to spell it out and say to people that hypothetically they'll have to hire a contractor, they'll have to pay a fee to the town to be hooked up. Um, in other words, the, the, the technical niceties yeah. uh, so that people say to themselves, I understand all of what's involved and perhaps even something that might suggest changes in fees and charges that they'll be responsible for. So, and, and I think at some point, even the time frame in which they're required to pay. Yes. Obviously, if they hire a contract, that's between them and the contract. But if there are fees that are from the town side, maybe there's a, a window that's several years long that yes. you pay this a little bit every year. I don't know. It's so just, well, uh, it's, to that point, we'll have an additional page called the connection page, which will be for businesses and households. It will have all the information on it for betterment because we still have to write and approve the betterment ordinance, uh, determine the actual cost in the street subsequent to the diff, because you have the whip, the Cape Trust, the diff, then you have betterment and user rates for capital. As the knowns become known, I think it's very helpful yeah. to put it out there so people know. Yeah, that's our plan as soon as we figure that stuff out. We'll be yeah, so that you'll see other pages appearing as the ordinances become evident. You to say yeah, I, I think it. I think this, the, that connection that you were talking about, similar to if you upgrade, replace your septic five, you can apply to the county of Barnstable for a thirty-year loan. Um, you can also take a very large, nice tax credit um, that is um, a refundable credit, meaning you don't you'll get it back um, over the, the course of. No, you can't. You have to draw it down over the course of five years, but there are. There are individual tax implications that um, people should also know that they can take advantage of um, that are beneficial to them. In particular, I'm pretty sure the county loan program, because um, I've seen it in Hyannis when there are sewer betterments, um, they apply for a loan. It's a low interest loan. They pay it out, you know, over a 30 year period. So if that also will be available to, you know, residents here in town. That could be a, a, a an important piece of information for them to for them to know. I think one other thing is that I was just thinking of we haven't talked about for a long time, but it really hasn't been identified, but uh, things like grinder pumps and who's responsible and all that. If, when we get them. Yeah, they are. Because uh, that was talked about earlier on in the process. We yeah. spoken of it then. So there's a few good uh, <clears throat> and well developed documents that have been 
developed on the Cape with all that background in it. We want to be able to, with the web page, strategically have a person say, I'm a homeowner, you know, on my own lot, and I have this condition, and it directs you to the guidance for that versus a business, because most of the documents that give guidance, it's all mixed in, you know. So we want to be able to, so once we get the betterments, the ordinance is done, then we build that page. Anything else on web pages? Probably skip to the resolution, which is, has to do with the web page. Mary, this is sort of uh, yours. I'm going to show them the Board of Health resolution. The, the Board of Health <laughs> spent several <laughs> meetings looking at uh, the resolution. Um, Bill thoughtfully drafted for us and uh, we discussed at length and we did pass it at our last meeting. We do certainly wholeheartedly support the waste management project, um, but we, we wanted to be good wordsmiths and, and make it um, reflective of our, our feelings. Would you bump that up a little in size? So we can... All right, so it's constructed as a typical resolution, whereas in the powers of the board that it states data from the reports, it states uh, the impact on uh, human health, sign of bacteria, and then uh, Kyle scroll up and it, uh, it gets into PFAS, as you can see. Uh, and, and one of the arguments this makes is that you cannot reasonably address all these issues uh, with on-site septic system. So it's as much of an issue that you need wastewater as it is saying on-site is not going to make this problem go away. So all of the data in here are linked to, if we want to go to the next page, Kyle, uh, down the bottom of that page, uh, there are web page addresses. So as we do these resolutions, there's going to be verifiable web page addresses there. That is the MEP reports, the, uh, the notices as it relates to the PFAS and water quality things. So if we wanna go up, uh, there you go. So it's now there for, and then it goes into why you're making that decision. And then the Board of Health resolves support on that date, we're collecting the signatures now. So I've gone to CEDC and I'll be writing one from them. I've gone to the chamber, be writing one from them. Eventually RAC could use this, but I think what you're doing is, whereas the Board of Health supports this, whereas you know, uh, you know all these other agencies support this. And then uh, you would add your components that are typical to your group. And then the be resolution. And the advantage of resolutions is letters of support are really targeted and sometimes they're not timeless. These basically go to, here are the reasons why we are making this vote and here's a vote. And almost every, all of this is timeless unless you get worse conditions that you want to add to the Board of Health Resolution. So this will be on the health and environment page. So each of those pages are going to have resolutions that show support from a particular group. Questions on that, and I'll be working with you guys if you wish to go in this direction. Yeah, if we look at the front page, one, two, three, four, <clears throat> the fifth, whereas up from the bottom it talks about the nitrate in drinking water levels yeah. above 10 parts per million is a health risk for infants of less than six months of age. That's a very restrictive. Uh, That's right out of the water department report. Well, there are other reports that uh, indicate oh, that this is hazardous to everybody. Basically. Everybody. <laughs> but it's, it's uh, those reports indicate a different level. And they basically... The EPA has not determined, there's this EPA statement in there, whether or not long-term impacts at different levels are deleterious to human health. And they haven't determined all the, you know, the impacts of so 10 PP, 1 PP respectively for nitrate or nitrite 
has been determined by the state of Massachusetts that that's the outcome. The difficulty in building this is we want to make sure there was a, an actual document that supported that statement. And that document would be the maybe 2021 or 2020 water quality report. And that's pretty much from the state of Massachusetts, that state. So yes, you can make claims there is a EPA one scroll up that is broader, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, it's like a steel motor boat on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you can see, according to the Environmental Protection Agency webpage, the current scientific research suggests, you know, in PFAS. So they're not even making a determination on the PFAS levels. So we're not going to put things in here that are beyond something that isn't in writing by a verifiable group. But you're right, it can affect adults, but that's at a different level. So we didn't want to put a table in here. Uh, I know when we, we were pulling back from some of this, I mean, Mary was insistent on making sure that we had these kind of things in here. But go to the bottom, Kyle. Uh, everything is backed up by those links. So I think this is an outstanding document. I do believe that there are very reliable studies. Right. Silent Spring. I mean, you can go on for environmental organizations in the country <clears throat> and the world, for that matter, which talk about the uh, nitrogen problem and very specifically and perhaps not be as selective in the uh, incorporation of specific sources. Right. Uh, but I mean, yeah. the difficulty is you're right. And when you put up uh, something from a text that was written a few years ago by uh, a nonprofit or a, not a state or federal agency, you know, then most likely it's accurate data. But what this is, is whatever, we don't want to put anything out more sort of, uh, for lack of a better phrase, dramatic than what the water department's doing. So our, our guidebook is whatever the water department's doing, <laughs> We don't want to go any further and then have people, because when we had an earlier version, we had some of those statements in there, and then there was a water department statement there, and then you're starting to compare it to and you're saying, are we this? And we weren't. You know, we are what, you know, our reports say from the water department. But it's enough to say, I mean, what one of the reports say is three wells shut down. Uh, that's enough said, you know. Okay. So Thank we, you. I, I... No, I mean, you're right. I mean, uh, Mary will tell you there was a debate back and forth on how far to go on this. And we finally, what helped is just those links. So somebody wants to find out that reference on nitrate and nitrite, it's in one of those links. Thanks again. We were pretty conservative, actually. I mean, I agree. There are certainly more studies other than the ones that the government is recognizing um, and including in their reports. But like Bill said, we, we wanted to be able to back up everything we said clearly. So the idea is each of these separate jurisdictions that apply, like uh, CDC would write something about uh, diversification of taxation employment and things like that, and how the sewer can help with that. Uh, the chamber might. Uh, write something to the effect of the impacts on businesses, on septic systems, and things like that. And so as we go through this, we get these uh, resolutions and then post them online. And, and they're, they're pretty much timeless. I mean, again, if it, if it does get dramatically worse, and hopefully it, it doesn't, then you might update them. Uh, those pretty much show that, and with their recent evidence of PFAS, mm -hmm. we think that's Helps us lock in the environment impact beyond my choice. Bill, are you looking for any resolutions from any regional groups? Regional uh, government groups, association, is, yeah, to preserve Cape Cod or Rick Bishop's, the, the group he's part right. of. So, uh, to sort of augment the environmental one, but yeah, regional groups, I think, would be helpful. Um, county government. This is to get 
support a town meeting. I don't know. <laughs> to a lot of people. <laughs> well, I thought I'm thinking these resolutions are broader than just our. <coughs> Um, I would think that as we continue to apply for grants oh, yeah. and go forward, oh, this back this background and level of support and understanding about the project, just the website alone is an incredible move forward in terms right. of how how much we want to make this a transparent project, right? Um, and get as much information out there as we can. All those things lead to a very vibrant submission when you're applying for right. large infrastructure grants. And 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 to that point. Uh, this is a way to cheat the grant requirements in the sense that a lot of times you can you have a narrative limitation, but you put website addresses embedded in and all this backup is there. So that's why we're building those grant pages, because if we talk to senators and representatives, we don't want their aides to go look and say, where's the project? So this will help us do that. But you're right. I think if, if we want to do it internally, then we look at our groups and then maybe we do a resolution for the county that heads out with grant applications. So uh, I'll be working on that uh, for Chamber and CDC, and we'll come back to you. And we think that the opportunity is that you're actually coordinating them all and saying, whereas all these groups uh, support this, and then we have a Think about what your whereas's are. Whereas uh, you're sick of this project and you want to get ahead. <laughs> Whereas, uh, at Kurt's point, I've been on this thing for a decade. You know, now therefore get it done. Yeah. So. Continuing degradation of our, of our water. There you go. Yes. Drinking water, everything. Right. Ponds. Because if you lived here for a long time, right, Spiro? I'm just you waiting can, for the, the you can, time bomb. You really can see the difference from when we were kids to where we are today to be around the water. Yeah. So I think we're good to go on those. Very good. By the way, uh, town meeting article discussion, and we'll make this brief. There's a few, if you want to call that, the uh, Warren up. Uh, there's a diff article. Uh, <coughs> District Improvement Financing. If you recall, uh, a few years ago, 2019, there was a diff, diff article that was approved, but it was limited to one specific area. This is Article 21. I sent everybody the diff document, and the way these things are improved is actually in two stages. Identified uh, the base values in the district. And this time we put the, <coughs> all the uh, parcels that are in the district in the, <coughs> in the back. In phase two, you identify the cost of the project and then how what percentage of those, of the new growth from those base value properties you apply to the project. That happens in 2023. So this time, all we're doing is determining where the district is and you know what properties are we going to involve so the map over there uh that's in the easter color is the lavender and the green the green represents a district that is called the invested revenue district and then the do, you development. To, do you want me to move that yeah here? sure we just put it right in front of the screen there so that in, uh, involves the IRD or the Investor Revenue District and the Development District. Those are coterminous, uh, meaning they both exist in the green. And the IRD or Investor Revenue District is where you collect the money from. And uh, collecting the money uh, means that uh, if you have a base value of a half a million and there is new growth, that is new construction, you collect a percentage of that to pay for the infrastructure. You can determine that percentage based on how much you want to pull out of the district. The other district, the development district, also coterminous in the green area, is where you spend the money. Now, the reason the state set it up this way is you can imagine the downtown, which has its sewer treatment plant a few miles away. The downtown doesn't need any work. The sewer treatment plant needs an expansion for a large project in the downtown. 
The downtown might be Lavender, which is development district only, where the money would be spent. And then it would be IRD, where it's going, I mean, it would be downtown, I'm sorry, would be IRD, where you collect the money. And then uh, the Lavender, where you spend it. So the lavender color is, those are the places you're gonna spend it. It didn't make any sense to have Buck Island Road a place where we're collecting money when it's the treatment plant itself and its property, nor the paths which represent two sewer lines connecting the two. There's not a lot of revenue growth there. So tracking all the growth associated with those single family homes and everything didn't make any sense. So, the IRD, Invested Revenue District, where you collect money from the new growth, and the DD, Development District, coexist in the green, and then the Lavender is only the DD. Now, the important aspect to this is you have multiple funding sources. You have the WIF, you have the Cape Cod Trust, uh, and then you would position the DIF next. Uh, because the next funding sources, betterments and user rates for capital, those are going to come out of property owners. The DIF doesn't uh, hurt property owners at all. All you're doing is if somebody walks in the town hall with a check for their tax bill and some of that check represents new growth, we decide that it goes down to the DIF versus goes to the levy. So it's not an additional tax for anybody so there isn't really any pain for a homeowner or a business as a result. So with the WIF, the Cape Cod Trust, and then the DIF, you try to position those where you're debiting those before you get to the betterment so you can lower the betterment. So that's a pretty, the great thing about DIFs, you can change a percentage to see what happens to the betterment and the user rate after. So I have a whole presentation for this, but I don't want to bore you with the, all so of the details. Quickly, the lavenders that seem to be disassociated. South there? Street, you see you have, I think. I, I know what they are. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, yeah, those are areas where there's going to be an improvement, but we didn't see those as uh, high revenue areas. Those, those are the pipes like, leading down to the. South I think Street. it had to do with infrastructure. Yeah, those, yeah, those, are, those so are basically going to collect the dough in the green and spend it in the purple, but. Purple in those, in those two situations, it's the sewer line to get down to South Shore. Correct. We wouldn't otherwise be able to get down there to include it in phase one. Right. And, you know, there wasn't a lot. I mean, you look at the parcels, maybe there's a little bit of growth along the Bass River in some parcels, but not enough to warrant tracking all that to look for new growth. It's kind of nickels and dimes. So you don't end up, I mean, well, not really nickels and dimes, but. <laughs> I don't know, the way some of those mansions get built up, there might yeah, be some serious revenue sitting there. I know, but uh, we at least wanted to capture, and to Kyle's credit, and, and, and working with Jeff, I, I think we got all the uh, pumping station locations and, and all that. And That's then where, where we saw potential for growth off the quarter, but you know, we extended the green and the uh, Lavender up into it's a terrific technique, clever technique to capture the growth on the shore drive. And the 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 alternative to this is in a 2019 financing report, they were looking at going back each year and capturing the townwide new growth. The issue with that is you can't really float a bond against an annual ask. So this is a specific uh, tool that the state has to be able to lock in the value and then collect against that value. So if the pressure, if it's a pressure main going up West Jams Road, why are those properties directly abutting West Jams Road? Well, you can't really, there isn't really clarity in the diff as to whether or not you draw a line on the roadway. So we're, you know, showing it. You're just, so you're just showing that because the main's gonna go up that street. Correct, right. It has nothing to do with the properties themselves. No. Right. Got it, okay. I mean, eventually <clears throat> you have uh, gravity coming back down or um, you have the parallel pipes. There is some gravity in that road that won't be in the first phase. Yeah, so I mean, we're, we're covering all our bases. I was thinking green everywhere, but somebody's going to point out that that large parcel that's a town to raise a tax 
value. So we were actually thinking of going all the way up to Mattakees and grab that. <laughs> but uh, that's a little too far. Gotta draw the line somewhere. Yeah. So uh, that's it. And it basically does what the financing plan said in 2019. The, the irony is, as the diff was being developed back then, uh, the state was developing the guidelines for the program. It had gone on for years without a decent guideline. So, you know, another thing I thought about was, was the CPA set aside. That number should grow with new growth also, because it is just a percentage of, of property tax anyways. So as property tax goes up, that percentage would go up right. naturally. So yeah. maybe the numbers we'll look at like the half a million dollars a year could also grow as in the, you know, grow in the future. And, and the advantage of the diff is you're not actually collecting any value associated with market increases. So as the sewer pipe goes down the street and there's a market increase, and if somebody doesn't build out, this town is capturing the market increase into the levy. So you're not losing anything. You keep the base, you keep the market increases, but then uh, we take a percentage of uh, a new investment. And so that's why it's important to get out there and start talking to them and do a market analysis of that investment. So the only other one was a stabilization account. Uh, that would be... Thanks, Dana. I then that tour <laughs> account. Stabilization account is a means to uh, basically providing uh, a depository from which you deposit funds in it uh, and uh, for use for wastewater. So if we talked about the WIF, the Cape Cod Trust, the DIF, Betterments, you saw in the fall town meeting where the enterprise fund was established, we're basically establishing the rules for each of those columns. And that's what this does is give you the uh, ability uh, to deposit funds from those other accounts uh, into year for wastewater. So the enterprise versus this is one's a parking kind of parking space for the other one to use. The enterprise is uh, effectively when you get to operations, it's your operational monthly budget. So this is a place to more like revenue. Capital. Yeah, side of yes. So you can see it's uh, short term rental excise tax goes into this. And there's a change in the short-term rental excise tax to put more money into wastewater. I think that's an article for this also. So uh, if you look at it from August uh, 2021, when Jeff gave the presentation to the board and then decided to go to the Y option, till now, I think uh, there's a lot has been accomplished with uh, Jeff's team getting the OPM and the designer and these articles fulfilling a lot of the financing obligations. Yeah, I think I think the time we spent on uh, DHY was just running in circles, unfortunately. Well, nobody can ask. Do you ever think we That's really all I have. Uh, so I appreciate your time. There's uh, other things like future public forums and key groups of oh, grant updates. Uh, Before we leave the um, articles, uh, yeah, Fisher, do you want to do any kind of endorsement by the rack of the articles? Yeah, there you go. Um, what's the committee's pleasure? Well, let's uh, identify them first. Which ones are we talking about? Article 18, <laughs> Wastewater Infrastructure Stabilization Fund. It's what you see up on the screen now. Article 21, which is the district improvement financing. And this one is the other one you mentioned. Uh, 19, amending the, I don't think they really need to endorse that one. But they could. Does that provide revenue for this? Uh, yeah, that's taking the short term rental out of the tourism revenue. Tourism. You scroll down to the recommendations. Or which one for this one? Or? Uh, yeah, that one you can see. We cut that. Yeah, so it basically um, seeks to reserve short term rental as it says in the next revision for this article. I move we take article 19 and um, with our support for it. 
And I'm going to break them up in case anybody wants to discuss. Yeah, absolutely. Not go down the same path of all three. Anybody care to second that? A second. Okay. Do we have any discussion on support of the enterprise fund? 19 is uh, the amendment this of the, the tourism part. Yeah, this is to make sure the money is flowing. Oh, you're talking about 19 or 18? 19. I'm sorry. I figured that would be the one. So anyone want to talk about? That's where it can. starts. You're right, Spiro. Right. I mean, we're not grabbing. We don't get that one. We don't. The other one. There's don't. no revenue flowing to the other one. So <laughs> there's right. no the, the stabilization. There's so, not. There'll be zero. Yeah, and it'd be nice to have a running start the next five to ten years, building up the fund from this before other needs present themselves and other people, other groups, other Reaching the pot. needs um, show up and want that money too. All right, should take a roll call vote, Mr. Chairman. I'm still studying myself here. So what, how does this affect the, res, the, the preservation fund then? Because it was a minimum a set amount subject to appropriation and then a percentage. When it was first established, short-term rentals. Was it just breaking out to just the hotels then? No. It's yeah, it's a hotel, which is what it was originally intended as short-term right. rentals okay, were involved when it was first established. So. so all the, like the second homes that are being rented out then becomes... Wastewater money or percentage of it versus not subject to the discount for the other funds. Right. But we are adding back the formality of the 50,000 for this 000, year, yeah. which the town had been delinquent and in moving into that fund yes, people, as a basis. People unfortunately misunderstood what that was. And I didn't misunderstand what it was. But, uh, yeah. So that's back. So hopefully, that's... automatically, it should. It was written in a time of. Economic turmoil in the town, and that's why the fifty, the subject to appropriation line was put there just in case. It was never intended to not be funded. It was just to, you know, if our backs up against the wall, we need to fifty grand. We don't use it for this. And unfortunately, over the years, it's just kind of gone in the shadows, and we forgot to, to set it aside. Yeah, because we back. Yeah, so, so we have done. It. Yeah. Okay. Um, roll call vote. I'll do the one for us. Tom. Aye. John. Aye. Sparrow. Aye. Go in. Aye. Myself. Aye. Mary. Aye. Tom Roach. You're still muted. We'll put you as an I unless you say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Vladimir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's, yeah. laughs> okay. Uh, so we were going to. Act on 18 uh, as well, correct? Stabilization fund. We want a motion to, to endorse that, to support it. We'll make a motion to uh, that the Water Resources Advisory Committee endorse Article 18, Wastewater Infrastructure Stabilization Fund. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, uh, once again, Tom. Aye. John. Aye. Sparrow. Aye. Joanne. Aye. Mary. Aye. Myself is I. I'm assuming Tom's okay with it, unless I hear otherwise. And then were we going to look at 21? Yep. That was a dip. Okay. Same, same thing. If I get to make a motion, I make a motion that the Water Resources Advisory Committee. Endorse Article 23, 21, District Improving Financing, Phase 1. A second. Second. Hey, there he is. <laughs> okay. Got a time delay here. Yeah. Okay. Good to hear from you. <laughs> any, any discussion on that? Okay. Uh, again, roll call vote, Tom. Aye. John. Aye. Spiro. Aye. Joanne. Aye. Tom Roach. Aye. Mary. Aye. Myself, aye. Okay, so we took care of that, right? Town meeting articles. Yep. yep. Uh, project grant update. So we've uh, filed in the uh, portal, uh, one stop portal, <clears throat> uh, a request for MassWorks to the tune of 2.1 million. Expression of interest, right? Expression of interest, yeah. yes. The, and so the expression of interest puts us in a position where we're more favorable when the round opens in June. Uh, 
we would look at construction, but they're going to need definitive construction documents and some sort of vote. So the difficulty is, uh, you know, having those ready for June. So what we're looking at is <clears throat> augmenting the design funds and then whatever we voted from before in the fall, we would have the mass works uh, plan sort of supplant some of those and free those up for construction. So that's our first iteration. I see two more as we get closer to design. Uh, one more on this corridor, uh, 28, and then the other one on Shore Drive. And uh, the attempt is you know, mass works easier than EDA in terms of your due diligence. So sometimes you can time them appropriately. So before 2023 town meeting, we're going to put an expression of interest in for mass works grant shortly after town meeting. Unfortunately, the round opens in June. So, you know, they're not really timed with town meeting per se. But, as I hear from Jeff and his team, we might escalate it to construction. But the difficulty is, you know, we can't prove construction until we prove funding. So they're going to need that. Yeah, on the EDA grant, you know, uh, Buzzards Bay got 2.34 million EDA grant, I think, in 2018. But the advantage they had that they that we don't have is they had a project identified that if they got the grant, it was going to happen. So that put them in much better position. So we would pretty much either need to identify that project or complete our economic studies that show that when we get wastewater, that show more definitively than just the UMass report that yeah, we'll so have the, development projects. To Kyle's point, the market analysis helps us in the dip and maybe helps us with grants. Because so, we've kind of stalled with EDA, with you know they need more some more proof, proof that yeah, yeah the difficulty with EDA is they need proof of funding. So when you tell them let's fund the collection system, it's like well, what is your vote plan? Yeah, so we have to figure out how we get into that funding stream. With the Are these grants that can you can take multiple multiple hits at, or is it one and done? No, I've uh, strung three of them together for the same project. So uh, they're uh, very, I mean, it's a very reasonable team. The key is going to be the, the evidence of economic development. So, and then the timing. So if you uh, apply, you know, the round opens in June, usually closes in September. The notice of award is in November. Your contract happens in January, and then you're off. So that might be a better position next year to take advantage of those. Yeah, point. but uh, I, depending upon where we are, we might actually ask for construction on this one, and then basically say pending town meeting, and we would ask for an extension. Oh, okay. So that's one way of doing it. Now those are both straight programs, correct? The, the EDA and the, and the work. Uh, EDA. What do you mean by straight? Like state? Oh, state. State, state, state is sponsored. EDA is federal. So. It is federal. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, I assume you're you're also looking at other federal opportunities, especially with all the extra money that's been. Well, Jesse, you're going after SRL. Yeah. So, so a lot of those federal monies we're hearing about are going to be funneled through the SRF process. Okay. So that's why the August 2023 is so important for us to get our programming so it's above and beyond what would be the normal srf numbers yes. that we thought about and there's a bond bill by the governor for 97 million bond bills are not always reliable but we were going to throw something at that and try to time it with dot and that works so, so bond bills usually work well when you're also working with the state so that's where we are on that. It's really about trying to time these things so that as the information is developed, we're hitting grant milestones. Excellent. So, uh, I had made uh, this list, if I may, just as thanks to talk about it, it became the agenda. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all right. So Actually, the, the future public forums, the key community good is also Spiro. You had brought that up, right? You guys wanted to talk about that. Yeah, uh, more targeted to. watershed neighborhoods as opposed to the town in general. But um, that would require some planning. So I guess that's what's on the agenda. 
Time, yeah, because planning and timing. So that, well, especially if you well, consider that some of these neighborhood associations are populated by seasonal residents, maybe trying to find that window where we get their attention might be important too. So we want to whack the hornet's nest instead of going we'll walk in, around going in the winter. <laughs> We want to go in the winter when well, we're going to spend the money. We got to let them know what we're spending it on. <laughs> Whenever you do, it's fine. I agree. There's some no, folks in the Lewis Bay neighborhood that are only here for a few months out of yep. the year and they're keenly interested in, in what happens. Um, a lot of projects, this one included. I'm just saying that uh, let's say we are agreed to go forward. We need four meetings and four districts in four months. Yep. That's unreasonable. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It does. Uh, so, well, identify the districts of, and, the, and the months at least, and then and, so I think start plugging stuff in. From past experience, I think if you if we target certain groups, we might, have a better, we might have a better uh, showing than we have in the other, like some of the meetings we have at the senior center, we really have a lot of people show up. Um, but they no. consider the population of the town. But I think if you target Hyannis Park and you target Tom's neighborhood or whoever, you've got a better chance of those people coming out because they have a direct interest in it. Um, and what, yeah, whatever, we're, we're probably yeah. saying the same thing. I just yeah. think you set a date for the wedding and then you invite the guests. It's yep, that's kind fine. of what happens. So you want to go to the West Yarmouth and do something at the Realtors building and then you figure out who the three or four constituency groups are. They get us an additional invitation to invite their members to, as sure. well as a general invitation, everyone in West Yarmouth to yeah. come to to that one. Oh, I agree. That's can fine. even, I, mean, I don't know if we're ready to spring any money for postcards, but aside from our own social media, electronic media, if it becomes uh, necessary, we won't spend any money to send a postcard to folks. These are the meetings you can plug into. And yeah, because you can target mailings to people you want to reach to. Um, okay. Anybody have any ideas on future forums? I, I think the fact that you've gone from DHY to Y and we have progress on selection, you know, and everything else, and we have Jeff, I don't think you can tune in before this town meeting, but between this town meeting and the next one. Yeah, well, maybe you have some in the neighborhood, you know, uh, my experience is those work well. And then you do larger meetings. So when you go to the large meeting and say, this group said this, this group said yeah, that. No, I agree. And because I, I think get them showing up. We have met, I think we, I thought we met with the Heinz Park Association before down at Tugboats one time. Yeah, there was something at uh, one of their annual meetings. I don't think I had attended, but I know we had people over. So again, there's one, and, and then you have an association, right, Tom? Yeah. Your neighborhood. So there's two. And if we identify others, and again, just in general, like Sparrow said, you get the mailing out. Any anybody geographically in that target area, we just get a mailing out. Well, uh, I've used uh, the emailing list. Uh, we send it to the chair of the association uh, email, and they send it out to their members. Yeah, and again, if we try to hit those seasonal areas where the owners are going to pay the bill, whether they are here year on or not, they should at least know what we're doing. We'll give them the opportunity to comment on it. Okay, maybe we I think we should target, what do you think? Target that for the fall would be better yeah, between Labor Day and, and Columbus Day-ish. Okay. That's when most, most of the people come around. Well, we have another meeting in October, right? So I'm sure we will. We anticipate any activity at all time meeting regarding the solar system to the wastewater. Uh, we don't really talk too much about that. We're trying to have some articles for each town meeting, but the, the big one I think is going to be for the construction dollars in May or April of 23. So we so might have, have your regulations. Then. You have to do regulations. In town meeting. You're right. There might be something along that line. Yeah, I just want to step on that conversation because we're still doing uh, introductory background informational stuff, September, October, November, December, and then you can reserve 2023 for the primers you're going to need for the April town meeting. Yeah, we'll probably have the betterment uh, process wrapped up with its ordinance, and that'll probably be going to town meeting. Right. So that'll be an important one to explain the charges, how it works. Yeah, and just to uh, get into the basics before you do the 
right and stuff. So all I was suggesting is we're guiding the town. The town is moving forward and we've got to bring the residents along with us. Right. If the first thing they hear from us is, by the way, in this April time, we have this financial article and um, they're not understanding this groundwork. Right. Um, I would argue this, West Charlotte is as, as seasonal as anything else in town. We do that one first. But we start losing folks. Yeah, no, I think it's important because they're also probably next in line for the phasing of the, of the project. So the well, direct impact is probably closer than some, some other areas of town. Not that everybody shouldn't know. We shouldn't do outreach, but I think we should start with them again because they are seasonal. Hit them when, when they should be able to here, here. Right. So the next one, next most seasonal would be the folks on the Shore Drive districts. Mm -hmm. And that argues for that part of South Yarmouth. Um, I, I would consider the stuff between 328 and 6 is, is primarily residential. That could be a third group. And then have to leave those guys out, but Yarmouth Port last. Yeah, um, well, this is eventually going to hit everybody. General yeah. tax, general tax roll. So can't just sort of. Actually, not, it's not supposed to. But no, but you know, you're you're talking gigantic. People make sure. Here. People right. Think and different. Even if it doesn't flow revenue wise, there's going to be some. Yeah. There's going to be some back by the town and the state. And one of the keys to this approach is you change the presentation slightly to target the issues assessed. So if you're going into a place where there's mostly rentals, then it's a matter of how wastewater helps their investment. Uh, so if I own a rental property and I want to sell it and cash out, I don't have to deal with the septic system issues and everything else. I'm passing along the user rates and abatement to the Next owner. So, from investment properties in the And those are the kind of messages as you go to each one. Uh, there's probably an area, neighborhood where they can't expand the septic system. The lots are too small. Water tables too talk high. About that. Mm -hmm. I got water tables too high. Yeah. So, we uh, have a base presentation, but we tweak it to go to the issues associated with each group. So, that's. All the type of questions we're getting at these sort of things. So, right. Um, I don't know how you want to proceed. You want to subcommittee this thing out, <clears throat> come back with the report, and say this is what the board sure, meetings thanks. look like. We thanks for volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> can I do this online and just keep passing around? Yeah, see if you have a subcommittee, can you meet with the four or the board of directors and the chair of the board of directors and what groups talk about? I was going to work. Yeah, let's figure out who they are as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, I, we're ascribing a lot of weight to those specific constituencies. Um, but yeah, nice place to start and then build up from right. those groups. There's some uh, amalgam of groups uh, from the days of the Vineyard Wind uh, issue with the cable through the bay. Uh, and I don't think it'd be too difficult to uh, rejuvenate. Uh, that uh, coalition, uh, which would be very supportive of this, as far as who is paying. Okay. Anybody else care to help Spiro with this? Oh, okay. Just starting in uh, West Jamaica, so I certainly would like to contribute. I think everyone will be included. I think at this point, I just. Um, yeah, the small put some, the quicker you get things to put some, uh, something on a piece of paper and start moving it around and tweaking it. I think it's attractive until we have a okay. And then just break it down into individual um, tasks. Because Bass River is in October, it doesn't have to be completely centralized. That's right. And so Tom has the Bass River Association and the South Yamaha Association on that side of town. 
Yeah, I mean, if so, so I flipped to this map because we were missing the top half. I'll just give you another one, but one, two, three, four. That's what I was suggesting. So Bass River would flow in here too, but I suppose Upper Bass River is critical as well, but you guys tell me it's talking about two slightly different constituencies. The lower half of the classroom around the upper half of the classroom. <clears throat> well, I think the friends of any, any meeting you want. So I think the friends of Bass River have combined those. Yes, there was a distinction between the two, but now they kind of feel more together because of the. Uh, well, I think they're starting to understand the interaction of the upper river and the lower river. Too. Yes, yes. But they are affecting Much each other. with the, the friends of Bass River brought a great deal more understanding. These folks. Um, let's, let's formulate some ideas and then ask these questions later, like more professional um, staffing at these meetings, town staffing at these meetings. It's going to be the same dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be the same dog and pony. Private security. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't need to run the show to say I asked the questions. Right. Um, CDM coming. So do you want to be at? Um, do you guys need to be at it at all levels? Are you coming up Kyle and let us figure it out? I vote Kyle. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what he just, he just voted for you. I mean, uh, as you're getting into betterment discussions with the right people. Are We're not under the same statutory requirements, but if there's five of us there, are you going to call us a meeting? Well, five members of five Iraq, members. yeah. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you are, you would post yeah, it in the tails. Do all that stuff. Well, right now we've got three people, haven't you? For the West Yam group, isn't that what you were thinking of? I was thinking. No, no, I agree. I'm just saying, if five of us show up in a meeting, we have an obligation to post it as a public meeting. So you have to right. take to those things into consideration. You and do. just to show up in a meeting and say, right. So I mean, we we would establish a methodology. The uh, when I was in North Andover, we had a methodology for outreach that involved each precinct. There were four captains spread out geographically in each precinct, and they were responsible for a certain neighborhoods to get a meeting at the closest school. And then they organize it, they get in contact with people. We brought the show. So we got a good geographical distribution doing that. Then we went to a general meeting in which everybody appeared and the captains would bring their people. So you already have the captain system by virtue of these neighborhood groups. So I think it's just we'll write up a methodology to make sure that we have consistency, but posting the meeting, everything else, we can make sure that happens. And you know, what does the agenda look like? The agenda should look the same, except for maybe one neighborhood, as we said, has a high water table, another has a lot of properties in a rental. So the topic might change slightly. But the outcome should be that those groups are then participating in the larger venue and also town meeting so that there is momentum. So that's what the sequence has to be. Eventually, we're doing this, we're going into a fall town meeting or something, you know, where I mean, we're not leaving them behind to go through the holidays to get all this and you come into the spring. So, yeah, if you're doing this in the fall, you can cliff notes what we've already done. You don't have to get too detailed because it's already right. history. And then just say, okay, here are the next steps. And here, you know, here's how it's going to affect you. That's, that's what I was questioning is how big's the check is that I'm going to write? Yeah. And so the financing plan and all that has to be set up. I think we need a tentative timeline as to when we be in phase two, phase three. So Everybody wants to know when is it coming to my house? Well, it kind of goes back to Spiro stock when you know, said it on a tax rate, and they, and they, probably not tax rate, but betterment. I've, I've believed for many years there are certain neighborhoods in that map that will tell it will come to the town and say, You tell us how much it is for us to tie this in, and we'll help you figure out how to pay for it. Meaning they'll buy, they'll pay in a different mode, maybe, than some of the other schemes that have been presented before. So you, know, you say you could say this neighborhood is going to cost five million dollars and there's X number of homeowners in here. This is if you're willing to write a check, this is what it costs you to, to be accelerated in the, in the map. Thank you. 
That's how I see it. And maybe it won't happen, but I can see that possibility. I'm sure I'm necessarily on that side of the page, I was more concerned that we're going to have um, long-time residents who are not anticipating this type of uh, expense, capital expenditure on their properties, and that they will naturally turn to sewer like loan for, uh, separate loan program that has yet to convert to a sewer loan program and is yet to figure out if they can afford to fund it. And if you aggregate all the people who are going to turn to it, uh, I'm not sure the numbers are there to turn to a county program and ask them to finance these connections. So there would have to be a, an additional separate financing um, scheme mechanism to allow folks to put this on their tax bill. Does that mean we get to carry that debt until it's paid off? And how do we finance that? So I don't want to go down this road in these meetings. That's not what this meeting is about. But you're right. That's when the folks start to really think it's real when they start asking those questions and we have to have some sort of answers to that. And all that is depending upon a person's timing, whether they want the septic system right away or they were thinking, well, I'm going to sell a house in five so, years. It's well, perfect. Um, yeah, there's always going to be that sort of, I just put in a septic system and they told me to come back. Yeah. So that some cost. And we have to have a window by which they have to connect. It's not automatic. You got to connect as soon as the line comes on. You know, there's a time frame that you join. A lot of us have gone through this with Chatham at this you know, first they did it, and they had to do it by requirement. So if you have a requirement to hook up in Chatham, you're gonna get a choice. Here's your one or two year window. Uh, first thing that happens is an engineering company contacts you and says, we're laying out the line, where do you want the connection? Hire us and we'll make sure it's in the right spot because you can end up with a connection over here, even though you're sort of like the there. So that doesn't work. True. It's nice to have the, the uh, kind of the, the line figured out beforehand. That's a minimal expense to get that into the plan. But crazy stuff happens along the way. Our guys are gonna lay pipe. It's either, it's higher than it was supposed to be. Now you get guys who are figuring on a gravity fee, as a pump fee, and your expense goes from 10,000 to 30,000 to connect. Unless you have a commercial property that is able to carry that, you're gonna be looking at some folks looking for some serious stuff um, to connect to this thing. Yeah, I mean, the septic systems are in the back and the pipe is in the front. So you have to reverse it in the basement where you have to run a house for So, I mean, those are the uh, point of sale discussions we have to have with them about what the cost is, but that doesn't really happen until you, you know, get there. We're not there in terms of data, but I, I don't think, I mean, you guys have a lot of data on where the ties might be or right now. So, yeah, they already have a lot of that. Where the tie would be, then it's uh, trying to figure out what the cost is for a house down a hill with mm -hmm. a grinder with a pump, you know, things like that. Distance? Right. But, you know, I think that those are the issues that we, if we have enough information to generally indicate here's what we're, nobody's going to get the bill at a public meeting. You know, we're not going to determine that, but we're going to understand what the betterment is for properties and how to assess it. Uh, the connection varies dramatically depending on the position of the house. Yeah. There's no so, real wedge down. I'm not sure there's going to be a rush to connect as much as folks <laughs> trying to figure out how they're going to connect. Right. Answer connections. So as we get closer to the fall, we'll be developing more of that information and putting together the web page that has the explanation of the household impacts, which there's plenty of models out there. Uh, and then as we have the hearings, then people will say, can you do a financing plan? Can you know, can it go 30 years? Can I, you know, what else, what are the other options that then we will find our, our systems? So, so this, this map becomes really relevant to part of my question for the priority of this because you guys are under the gun first. Where's my subject that's been like that? And when is this thing going to come by my house? So I don't feel stupid that we just spent 30,000 bucks on acceptance. All right. You guys have 30 years before the project comes to them. But um, they got plenty of time to think through what's going to happen and when, and how they uh, share the cost of connection. And it's factored into the real estate values when it's that 
as opposed to this, a shot, bit of a shock up front. If we're looking at a year, uh, you very much. A period which these things going to start to become real. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't see anybody from Friends. I don't see anybody from Friends of Bass River. I was going to have some news today, but apparently not. Oh, what kind of related to this is the hospital's kind of in the process of doing something similar to the cranberry boards, the abandoned boards. Does the town have any position on that, or is that just being done by them? We haven't had any contact with them on that. That's something that they're working with NRCS directly on. Um, the other previous NRCS projects in town than a town match requirement. I think this is special. I'm not aware of a town match component to it. Um, so it is moving forward. I've only, um, I only know what you know, which was an out the paper. Yeah, that's about it. I don't have any details. Okay. There's no town piece of it that I know of right now. Anybody have any new business? Nobody in Zoom land? Okay. Uh, we have minutes that were sent out with the agenda. If anybody's read them, if you have some motion approval. I move that we approve the minutes from the um, February 28th, 2022 meeting. Second. 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 Thank you. Uh, all right. Any corrections, comments? All right, we'll do roll call. We'll do Tom Roach first. Aye. Mary. Aye. Joanne. Aye. Sparrow. Aye. John. Aye. Tom. Aye. Bert, aye. Uh, future meeting dates, agendas. Do we need to meet directly at the town meeting or should we hold off a little bit? Or do we want to meet somewhere in the near future just to talk about the outreach? Well, your subcommittee is probably going to give you a schedule, right? Um, so, yeah, I'll be ready for the next meeting. Just pick that's coincidental. All right. So I'm going to leave the staff tell us what you think you need. After town meeting, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. May. You do May 2nd. You want to do May 2nd would be the normal meeting time. If anybody wants to shoot for that, we, as always, we can make it flexible and move it. 4 p.m. 4 p.m. So it is the first Monday of the month? Typically, okay. Typically but we've okay. just been kind yeah, of we get changed around because of time. <laughs> we're just trying, trying to catch up. Yeah. Okay. If nobody has anything else, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Yeah, there's nobody here. Why did you have public? Is there something in particular? No, sometimes Tom says something. Oh, Kurt, Kurt asked. Yeah, Kurt asked me to take that off. Actually. <laughs> uh, okay, we, we had a motion. Did we get a second? A second. Thank you. Uh, Tom? Aye. John? Aye. Sparrow? Aye. Joanne? Aye. Mary? Aye. Tom Roach? Aye. Myself, 